We're up in the kitchen, we're making a mess With original recipes, we're trying our best We hope it tastes good, cause that's the point of this thing We're whipping it up, we're whipping it up We're whipping it up with Whiz Bang Alright, welcome back everybody to Whipping It Up with Whiz Bang I'm your host today, Casey Campbell from Buffalo Wobs and the Price Hill Hustle Appreciate you all. Hope you're uh, doing well out there. And we're going to make uh, an awesome dinner tonight. I'm going to kind of play with some of my favorite foods and flavors um, about my whole life. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do some personal sized bacon wrapped meatloafs and a bourbon bacon Brussels sprout. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and get right to it. I've got uh, a pan heating up here. Uh, do I? No, no, I don't. Okay, let's, let's get our pan heating up. <laughs> all right, so we're just going to put that on about a medium heat. Go ahead and cut a little bit of butter to get in the pan for this guy. And then we're going to dice up our onion to get it sauteing before uh, we incorporate it into our meatloaf. Um, meatloaf has always been one of my favorite things to eat, but uh, especially with just two of us at the house these days, um, my wife and I don't really care to make a whole large meatloaf. So uh, this is actually my wife's recipe, Jessica. Big shout out to Jessica Tate out there. Uh, to do some personal sized meatloafs. That way everybody gets like the best parts. You get that little crusty top. You get all the nice meatloafy center without having to do an entire pan of meatloaf. They serve up nice for leftovers as well. And then just for that extra little uh, flavor and to kind of keep them together, presentation wise, all that good stuff, we're gonna wrap them in a piece of thick cut bacon. So. So what I did here is I just uh, you come down, a little trick I learned in the kitchens long ago. If you want to dice an onion nice and small, cut it to where it doesn't quite go through the back of the onion there. And then uh, that gives you all of your thin slivers. And then we're going to cut those nice and fine so that they're not too large once they cook down. You want the flavor. You don't necessarily want the texture. So we're just going to do half an onion there and half a bell pepper. Uh, this recipe is going to be for four medium-sized uh, meatloafs, uh, or like medium personal sized, I should say. Uh, about eight to ten ounces a piece, so we're doing two pounds of meat. So I'm just going to use half of my vegetables. If you had a larger family or wanted to make bigger batches, you could always do that as well. So same thing with our uh, bell peppers here, and even more so with the bell peppers, really. We want to get those nice and finely chopped. Keep your fingers out of the way of the knife. You wanna have them all to play with later. Uh-huh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, unreal. A long time ago in a life far, far away, I used to teach cooking classes. So it's nice to be back in the kitchen. Fine dice there. We're just gonna take this cutting board right over to the skillet. Got my butter melted down and hot. I'm gonna throw those in. Mm-hmm. All right. And another thing that I always recommend is season as you go. Don't wait until the very last bit and you try to get all of your salt and pepper in at the very end. You want to go ahead and season as you're moving along. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and throw a little bit of garlic in here too. Why not? Same thing here. Nice, quick, fine chop on these guys. Mm -hmm. When I was growing up, garlic wasn't something that we added to everything. And I'm, now that I've become an adult, I'm not quite sure why we didn't. Garlic is where it's at, friends. All right. So what we're doing is we're just sweating down this garlic, these onions, and these peppers. We're not looking for a full cook on them. We just want to get them going before we add them into the meatloaf because They'll finish softening up while the meatloaf is cooking um, so they don't stay you know, too hard 
or anything like that. So let's just give that a little toss. Mm -hmm. Oh, probably just about five to seven, eight minutes. And you see that the onions are starting to get a little translucent. Or they're starting to sweat down a little bit is when you want to pull those off, okay? All right, so what we're working with today here, I've got a mix of ground beef and pork. Just about one to one, uh, not, not entirely. It's probably about, oh, two thirds, three quarter pound of pork to a pound of beef is what we're doing here today. You can use really whatever ground meat you want. I always like to go with like an 85-15 mixture of the ground beef. That's 85% uh, lean, 15% fat. So you get a little bit of fat, but it's not like as fatty as you would have a burger be, you know. So we've got our beef in there and pork. Now we're going to crack our egg. We're just going to use the egg yolk here. So separate that. Whoop. Just going to toss the yolk back and forth until we lose all of the white. There we go. That's good enough. Watch your shell. All right. If you do a lot of bacon, you can save onto that egg white. If you don't, then don't. Let's go ahead and throw our seasonings in here. Give these another quick toss so we don't burn them. Mm-hmm. Garlic and onions on the grill. If you ever pass a little side burger stand off the side of the road or something that smells delicious, it's probably because they've got onions on the grill and they're getting all that smoke out to you guys uh, to make you want to eat it. So. All right, let's go ahead and season up a little bit here. And do salt. Mm -hmm. That looks about right. And let's see, we're gonna do some ground pepper. I'm a big fan of ground pepper. We're also going to add a little bit into the top of the meatloaf, uh, the, like the ketchup topping, so you don't have to go crazy on the ground pepper in there. All right, a couple extras here. Cardamom, it's one of my favorites. Nice earthy herb. It's just this good sort of depth of flavor. It's not too pungent, so you don't really like, know necessarily what it is. You just kind of get this warm sense. And then ground coriander. Uh, coriander seed is actually the seed to the cilantro plant, but it has a totally different flavor profile. Kind of the same way, real nice and earthy. And then garlic powder, uh, not garlic salt because we've already added our salt. Just a little bit of garlic powder in here. There we go. Unreal. All right, then uh, just a couple dashes of Worcestershire. There you go. Worcester, as they call it. And uh, let's see, that's it for uh, the seasonings in there. So let's just go ahead. Oh yeah, those look good. So you're getting a little bit of brown on that. Let me see if you guys see that. A Little bit of brown, but the onions are starting to get a little see-through. They're not completely cooked down, but that's exactly what we want right there. It's just nice and softened up. So let's go ahead and throw those in there. Now typically you may want to just pull those off the stove and let them cool for a little bit, but it's no big problem because we're gonna get these right onto the uh, pan and into the oven. So uh, let's see, let's grab us a spatula here. We're gonna go ahead and start breaking this in. Break your yolk, start mixing that down. And then once we get a little bit incorporated, we're just gonna get right in there with our hands because those are the tools that we were born with. All right, so just a little bit broken down there. Now we're just going to get right into it. Now you don't want to, you want to mix well because you want everything to be nice and incorporated. But you don't want to mix so much that the meat kind of becomes goopy and overdone. It just becomes sort of, I don't know, stodgy and doesn't have good texture when it's done. So you want to kind of be slightly ginger. And mainly what you don't want to do is like get it in your hand and mash it. You don't want to mash all that meat together. You just kind of want to push it, roll it on top of each other, and then mix those bell peppers and onions right in. So, okay, no big chunks of meat without flavor and seasoning in it. That's the big key. All right, wipe our hands off here, and then just get our sheet pan over here. 
Now I've already got my oven preheated for 375. Go ahead and do that. So here we go. So now, like I said, I'm just gonna use about two pounds of meat for four servings. So you can just have that, eyeball it, and then take a half and have it again. And those will be our portions. So what we're gonna do here, gonna kinda make a burger patty, except more tall than flat. So we kinda want them to look like, like if you were to go to a steakhouse and you got, I got filet mignon or something, it's about that size. So, yeah, uh, about, uh, yeah, about like that, okay? Meatloaf reminds me of Sundays. I don't know about y'all, but mom always had a plan for after church on Sunday mornings, and my favorites were always pot roast, which would go in a slow cooker or crock pot, or meatloaf, which she would prep in the morning before we left for church. And then when we got home, it goes in the oven for an hour and a half or so. Mashed potatoes, mm, can't beat that. And we ain't doing the mashed potatoes, but I highly recommend some mashed potatoes with this meal. All right, so then we're gonna wrap these in bacon. I got a thick cut uh, bacon here, not super thick, because uh, I do want all the fat to render down. It'll stay a little chewy if you don't. So, prep that, get a couple toothpicks. You don't have to get the colored ones. <laughs> and I don't, think it, I don't think it matters. I've never seen any bleed out from the color. They're food safe, obviously. So, I mean, I'm not too worried about it. So, I'm just gonna take this here. We're gonna wrap around the sides. And you wanna keep it pretty tight. Bacon will wrap over about one and a half times or so. And then we're just gonna take a toothpick right where that uh, back seam is. Just toothpick it right in there. And that's just to keep it from drawing off of the meat, you know, when it's cooking down. So you can see kind of the height of the meatloaf, yeah? Like there, if you wrap that bacon around, it's about as tall as the bacon is there. So it gives you just a, an eyeball of your size. And then number three. Now I tried, I tried a version of this with wrapping the whole meatloaf in bacon, and it turned out okay. But uh, honestly, I think it's a little overkill. So I like this version better. This is the original Jessica Tate version. So, all right, so there's number four. Now, what we need is our uh, ketchup topping, okay? Um, so we're gonna just go with the old standby. About, well, let's see, for those, you need about a tablespoon plus for each, so about four tablespoons. More, nice little mix there. Just about a tablespoon of spicy brown mustard, not as much, but a little bit. Add that extra bit of flavor there. Just a dash of Worcester. And then sriracha, sriracha sauce. And again, just about, oh, just about probably a half teaspoon teaspoon. You're not really looking for this full spicy element of it. You just kind of want that flavor. It is a little bit, it's like fancy ketchup really is what it comes out to. So. And then a little bit of our ground pepper again on top. So. All right. Just give a quick whisk on that. Make sure it's all mixed up together. And then We'll just use the same spatula we had there. We're just gonna dollop this on the top. Mm -hmm. There you go. Mm -hmm. Like I said, this is one of our favorite things about these personal meatloaves. Number one is that they're you know, personal sized. It makes a nice little presentation. You can do them kind of ahead of time if you want but you get all the best parts of the meatloaf all in one little package without having to eat your body weight in it, you know? You get the ketchup and the crusty element and you get the bacon with that little crunch. And 
all that meat loafy goodness. Meatloaf. I would do anything for love. <clears throat> Had to at least sing a little bit of meatloaf. You can't go, you can't say meatloaf 50 times and not acknowledge the man. All right, so spread those out there. All right, in the oven we go 375. So that's going to cook for about, oh, 55, 65 minutes or so. And then at the very end, I like to crank it up to maybe about 385, 395, just to make sure that top kind of gets nice and golden, okay? So. Cool, all right, so now what we're gonna get into are our Brussels sprouts. Uh, this is one of my personal uh, favorite recipes. I kind of started developing it years and years ago, like I said, when I was doing some cooking classes. Oh, nice. Off camera help for the whiskey. Whiskey or bourbon will work, and really whatever is your personal flavor, um, make it something good, you know? If you wouldn't drink it, then don't put, don't put it in your food. But I mean, is, the existential question is, is there any bourbon that you wouldn't drink? See, you just ask yourself that question and then you go from there, so. Uh, let's see, let's go ahead and start with our bacon. So I've just, I reserved four pieces of bacon here. We're gonna chop them up into small little bits. Now you could just cook the whole pieces of bacon down um, and then like crumble them up at the end. I like going ahead and doing this mainly because it cooks down a little quicker. You get uh, the fat to render out of the bacon, which is really what we want because we're gonna cook the Brussels sprouts in the bacon fat. One of the sloppiest jobs in the kitchen is chopping bacon. It really helps too if it's really, if it's super cold, if the fat's still congealed. If you find it hard with uh, whatever knives you may have at home, uh, you can always pop it in the freezer and there's nothing wrong with that. Just freeze up that meat and let the fat get really hard. And we'll just chop those up a little bit. They're gonna come out as pretty much bacon bit sized uh, pieces. So let's do that and go ahead and get our burner back on about a medium heat here. You can just keep the onion and the pepper bits in there. There's really not gonna be anything wrong with that. So while that heats up, let's go ahead and prep our Brussels sprouts. The Brussels sprouts are one of my personal favorites. I never ate them as a kid, which I don't think many people did. And I've realized why. It's because we were dealt a really poor hand with the way that people cooked Brussels sprouts until recently, I think. Uh, you don't have to boil them to death. We're not gonna boil these at all. Um, we're actually gonna put them, I mean, you can eat them in raw if you want to, Brussels sprouts, shave them up a little bit, uh, make a salad out of them. Uh, they're super good. You can use all the little uh, individual leaves there as well. So we're gonna chop those down. They may fall apart a little bit, but no big deal. But what we're looking for is something that's gonna be bite-sized because we want to, we're gonna cook these pretty fast once it all comes down to it. Um, there we go, so we'll just save the rest of those for later. All right, so we've got all of our Brussels sprouts done and down. Our pan's getting nice and warm. We're just gonna toss this bacon in. Nothing to be upset about there. Mmm, unreal, smells good. Now you don't wanna burn your bacon and with it being chopped up like that, you do kinda have to make sure you don't just, you know, forget about it. There we go. We just got it spread out in the pan. Nice medium heat. Just let those go for a second. And we'll uh, finish prepping for our Brussels sprouts here. Um, we're going to do some more garlic. We're going to do a little bit of a different cut on the garlic. And that's mainly just because of the way we're cooking. So what we're going to do here is just uh, do some thin slivers on our garlic. I'm a big fan, like I said, so I'm gonna actually do, I'm gonna do two larger, well, those are three smaller cloves. You just use, use your heart when it comes down to garlic. A little smash on the knife, breaks the paper. And then just 
peel that off just like that. Okay, so like I said, we're just gonna do thin slivers here. They'll kind of melt down when uh, they're added to the Brussels sprouts, but you don't want it so thick that you get a little crunchy bit because it will stay kind of peppery. Like we're not gonna cook, we're not gonna cook this garlic down to oblivion. We're gonna let it be a little more pungent and potent. Oh, also a good thing to do is remember what time you put in your uh, meatloaf. We're just gonna do a little guessing today. All right, so our bacon's probably just about done. And we're gonna wanna reserve that bacon until we started cooking up our, uh, ah, a couple minutes longer. But we're not gonna keep the bacon in the pan because if you do that, it'll just burn. It'll kind of cook down too much. So we want to cook it to where we get our fat out of it and they start crisping up, but we want there to be bacon intact when we're finally all said and done here. All right, so let's take our bacon out, keep that fat in the pan. Bacon fat has a pretty high smoke point too, so it's a good thing for this recipe because what we're gonna kinda do is sort of like skillet fry our Brussels sprouts. We're gonna get them in a really hot pan so that they don't have to cook forever before they start getting a little crispy and a little toasted. Nothing bad's gonna happen if you overcook your Brussels sprouts, but they just become soft and kinda mealy and I think that's what a lot of people don't like about Brussels sprouts. And don't ever, and I mean ever, use frozen Brussels sprouts for anything, okay? Maybe a soup, maybe. But otherwise, don't you dare. I will tell on you. Dude, I'll tell you what, let's, we're gonna add a little bit of olive oil, or not olive oil, I'm sorry, vegetable oil here to our pan, just a little bit to make sure we keep a good oil level there. You don't want them just like soaked in oil, but, uh, you want them to make sure that you want to make sure that everything kind of gets coated in that fat and will do up like we want it to. All right, about another minute, so you just sort of do this. Just kind of. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we're going to go ahead and portion off our whiskey. We'll get everything ready here while it's going. Okay, so we're gonna portion off about that, well, about that much. That's not to cook with, that's, that's for you. Quality control is what they call that. You have to, quality control is what they call that. You have to, you have to test your ingredients as you go along and uh, the, the spirits are no different, so. Yeah, that's good, that'll work. All right, so. Our oil is nice and hot, so we're going to throw these in. We're going straight to a nice little pan fry. Watch out. If you cook barefoot, you do so at your own risk. Talking to myself. A little toss. You want to keep them on the heat, though, because you want to get that heat nice and rolling. Uh, and then, again, season as we go. Little bit of salt. You got that bacon fat in there. It's gonna add some saltiness so you don't have to overdo it on the salt. But definitely wanna pop that flavor out. And a little bit of black pepper. All right. Now we're not gonna add our garlic yet. We're actually gonna add our garlic right before we add our uh, whiskey because we again we don't want to overcook the garlic if you throw it in there it'll be fine but you run the risk of burning it especially since we've got that oil in there um, so we're gonna add it just about a minute before we add our uh, whiskey and then burn off the alcohol because once that hits and we finish it off with a little bit of butter we're pretty much done really so um, Best thing to do with these two is to, to kind of time it out. So say about 15 minutes or so before you pull the, um, 
meatloaf's out of the oven to start resting and stuff, you can go ahead and start this process. Because it really doesn't take probably 20, you know, 20, 25 minutes to get these things start to finish. So we're starting to get a little bit of caramelization on them. That's another reason like it's good to cut them in half or in quarters because you get more surface area. So that hits the pan hot, gets that nice little color and that, that char on them. And uh, we'll be ready to rock. It might come down to personal preference too on the doneness of your Brussels sprouts. Like I like, I like to have some texture. I don't like it to where it's just mush. Uh, and they'll do that super quick. So that's why you, you only kind of have to cook them for maybe about half as long as a lot of other recipes go, you know, uh, because otherwise they just boil down to nothing. The water starts releasing, all of the vegetable fibers break down and it just becomes mush. Mushy Brussels sprouts ain't good for nobody. I believe Abraham Lincoln said that. All right, there we go. Let's see if I can get a little you see that color we're getting right in there? That little guy right there? That's what we're looking for. We're actually gonna turn that, I'm gonna turn that up just a little bit. Keep that nice and hot. I gotta say, it's nice being in the whiz-bang kitchen here because uh, I'm cooking with electric at home, and that's fine. But it is not near as good as cooking with gas, so uh, kudos to all you people with gas ranges out there. I, I salute you. So. All right, so again, so we're just gonna let those cook a little bit and just kinda Sing a favorite song in your head. Been listening to a bunch of John R. Miller myself recently. So maybe sing some of that. Your favorite whiz bang artist, whoever it may be. Buffalo Wobbs and Price Will Help you do that. Test your whiskey again. Yep, yep, that's still good. That's still good. Good deal. So we're getting some nice color on those now. So when we add the whiskey, we're adding liquid, which is kind of our enemy from the crusty part, which is why once the whiskey goes down and the alcohol burns off and you add in your butter, which we're going to do about, oh, let's see, we'll do about a tablespoon of butter, give or take. But once you add that liquid, then it's kind of a race against time. You don't want it to cook forever after that. Um, and burning off that alcohol, I mean, the, the, the whiskey will start evaporating real quick, which then all that flavor just gets sucked into the Brussels sprouts without having to cook it to death, you know? So. All right, so we got our good looking sprouts there. Let's scoop up our garlic now and go ahead and add it. Give it another quick toss. And you want it in for maybe just about a minute or so before you add your whiskey in to deglaze the pan. You want it to start getting fragrant, but you don't want it to get to the point of like half cooked already, because like I said, it'll burn pretty quick. Nobody likes burned garlic or burnt butter. Those are two things you don't want to do. Don't burn your garlic, don't burn your butter. I believe George Washington said that. We're gonna go with about, oh, let's see. So I've got just a full sort of medium sized skillet here. We wanna go with about, oh, a third of a cup to a half a cup of our whiskey. And then you wanna light it. All right, so that's the flambe. So all that's doing right there is just burning off your alcohol. Don't add your whiskey and then let it cook forever and then flambe it because the alcohol will start clouding. And that is not what you want because then that's when you get that big whoo and that's when like you gotta call the fire department and then you gotta explain to your wife why you had to call the fire department. No good from that, so. All right, so then we're just gonna add our butter. We're gonna let that melt. I'm actually gonna add just a tad more whiskey and just a tad, I mean, get a little more liquid in there. If you don't have a gas stove, you don't have to worry about burning off the alcohol. It'll evaporate on its own. The flames are really part show and part just expediting the process, so. All right, so our butter's melting down. These are all nice and glazed with the 
whiskey or bourbon of your choice. Once that butter melts down, we're just about done. So then it's about another, oh, I don't know, right now about 25, 35 minutes on the meatloaf and we're ready to go. All right, folks, and we're back. Uh, it's time to pull our meatloaf out of the oven. Yeah, it's time to pull our meatloaf out of the oven. All right, so let's go ahead, grab these guys. Oh, unreal, look at that. Look at those. So they held up together nice and tight there. See our bacon sort of getting nice and crispy. Kept those on low so our Brussels sprouts are ready. So let's uh, put these guys on the old plate. Very important. Perhaps the most important thing in this recipe. Don't forget that you have a toothpick in them. No fun. You got to call the fire department for setting your house on fire and then call 911 because you're choking on a toothpick? Nah, man. Bad form. All right. Pull those. Yoink. The bacon's still a little tender, but it's nice and crisp where the fat rendered down started crisping up for us. All right, so there are those. So we added the bacon in right as these guys were finishing up. You just toss them back in, give it a little toss up. You don't really have to cook the bacon down anymore. That's one of the beauties of doing it ahead of time. You get the fat to cook in and also they're just done. So, so that's it folks. Got you a little side dish. Like I said, do you up some mashed potatoes. Uh, roast off some other vegetables or something like that. You got a whole meal. You can prep these ahead of time, uh, throw them in the fridge, and then pop them in, you know, an hour and a half before guests get there and you got a, like a whole dinner and everybody can have their little bit. It's nice. Uh, yeah, I think that's about it. Um, well, thanks again. I sure do appreciate uh, everybody here at the Whizbang Kitchen for having me. Again, Casey Campbell from Buffalo Wobs and the Price of Hustle. Big thanks to the Whizbang family. And uh, we'll see you on the next episode of Whip It Up, Whip It Up with Whizbang. Let's try one of these guys. All right. So, folks, this is the, to me personally, this is the weirdest part about any cooking show is watching someone eat on camera. But, uh, you know, you got to do it, right? So.